Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we are continuing the 100 Dragons Challenge. We're on number 10. We finally hit double digits, finally, but we still have a long way to go. So let's jump into today's theme. So today we have a suggestion from Favs, who's a friend of mine here in Arizona, and it does hit close to home. We're going to do an Arizona dragon. So before I start, Anyone who wants to enter this one for the KM 100 Dragons, I'm accepting both Arizona or Desert Dragon. As long as it fits within like a deserty theme, I'm gonna count it as Arizona. So, cause I, I know not everyone's from Arizona and this is kind of more of a personal one for me just cause I live here and I've been here basically my whole life. So uh, yeah, just FYI, if you don't know anything about Arizona, you don't need to, it can be a Desert Dragon. So for these initial sketches, I wanted to incorporate some animals from Arizona and some different aspects. So first and foremost, I really liked the idea of bringing in a cactus wren since it's our state bird. It's a cute little bird that can just um, exist and uh, be on cactus even with all the thorns, hence its name cactus wren. It also uh, makes nests and burrows in cactus. So I wanted to do that for my first initial concept, but I also wanted to incorporate some other things. So I added cow horns or kind of like steer horns because in Arizona we have what are called the five C's and it's what Arizona is known for. It's citrus, cattle, cotton, climate, and copper. That's the main five C's of Arizona. So I wanted to at least incorporate one of them. And so I thought cattle would work pretty well. And then for this second sketch, uh, I wanted to do a couple more Arizona animals. So I based this one off of the Gila monster and a Javelina. So I really love Gila monsters, especially they're coloring the dark skin with the orange spots. And then I actually grew up around Javelina, I guess you could say. Uh, my grandparents have a cabin up in Prescott, which is a state or which is a, a city in the northern part of the state and there's a lot of amazing wildlife up there and I basically spent a good chunk of every summer up there since my birthday lands on July 4th. We'd always drive up there for um, a big birthday party celebration and everything and there was deer and javelina up there all the time uh, including some uh, blue jays and robins and lots of amazing creatures up in the northern part of Arizona and that's more of a, I guess it's, it's not really deserty but kind of pine forests and such so I knew I wanted to incorporate uh, two of my other favorite animals of Arizona. And of course, I could not leave out the scorpion. So I thought it'd be really cool to add a scorpion tail to these creatures. Um, I wanted it in kind of both versions. So I sketched out a couple different body ideas. The cactus wren, I kind of pictured kind of like a wyvern-like dragon. It has its main arms um, as wing arms. And then the back feet, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with that, if I wanted to do cattle feet or more similar to the cactus wren. It was really tough. I didn't know which one to do, so I kind of just left them as stubbies in the initial sketch, and I'm like, I'll figure it out in the final one. And I really liked both ideas, and I kept going back and forth and loafing on what I wanted to do. I felt that the Gila monster combo was in my comfort zone and what I tend to do, and I knew that I could execute that one well, and I decided to not do that one. I, I wanted to, because I could see it being really cool. And like I said, it was in my comfort zone, but I decided to push myself outside of my comfort zone. So I'm gonna go with the cactus wren combo. It's like a interesting griffin, dragon, bird, dragon thing, wyvern, whatever, and uh, or wyvern, however you pronounce it. I've been told it's the same or both or whatever, but I decided to push myself and try that. So. This drawing already started off as a little bit intimidating because I'm like, oh god, I'm going to try first of all to do a full body sketch because I really did enjoy doing the full body for the Cosmic Dragon and I'm going to see how long I can keep it up. I might have a couple more headshots coming up depending on my timeline for making these, but I'm hoping to have enough time to keep doing the full bodies because I do agree it really encapsulates the whole design process when I can show off the full body and show the thing in action. So I'm going to try to keep it up, but please don't murder me if I only get to headshot because there's just some weeks it just doesn't happen. So I uh, started out by sketching how I wanted this guy to exist in the space and I knew I wanted him to be uh, like a desert dweller, like obviously he's a desert dweller in Arizona, but I wanted to show him within his environment and I decided to make him kind of a, a small dragon, like little, little wyvern. 
And uh, I wanted to put him on a cactus to show his cactus wren roots. So I have him there on a cactus arm. It's going to be developed a little bit more, but I wanted him just to be like as if he just landed from mid-flight trying to scope out maybe some bugs or small rodents or something that he can eat. Because I could see him being, uh, I don't know, a cactus wren is pretty small and the proportion to him to the cactus arm that I drew, he'd probably still be around cactus wren size, but I'm assuming since he has teeth and the sharp beak, I bet you he could still, oh, and like claws and his tail, like all of those advantages, I think he could still pick off small rodents, even for his size. And he kind of has like a vulture-ish look too, now that I look at him, I, I like this combo. I, I know the cactus wren has a long beak, but I really exaggerated it and curved it a little bit and it kind of kind of gave him a little bit of a vulture look. So I think that turned out pretty cool. And I honestly, uh, I was actually struggling with this guy a lot. Like I kept going back and forth on my sketch on if I liked it or not. Um, now that I'm looking at it again, I do feel it looks pretty good and uh, I like him overall, but I still think about that other sketch with the Gila monster and the Havelina. I keep going back. I'm like, oh, I should have just stuck with my comfort zone. But I'm like, no, 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 Kaylin, you got to keep pushing yourself. You got a hundred dragons and you got a hundred more up or, well, not even hundred, 90 more opportunities <laughs> to stay in your comfort zone. Let's, let's keep pushing it and try something different and new with these things whenever I can. So now with the uh, sketch out of the way, we're jumping into line art. Um, and I wanted to ask you guys, so I've been struggling with the lighting of these videos. I finally think I found a pretty decent lighting. Um, I had to move my big light from the other side of the room that I use when I'm filming my face. Um, and I put it right near the desk. And I was just curious what you guys thought of that. Did you like this new lighting? I'll put a poll right here. Let me know what you think of the lighting overall in this video. Um, I mean, you can say it now because it's going to be pretty consistent throughout the video, but if you want to wait till the end, you're more than welcome to make your judgment call then. But um, I know that a couple people have pointed out telling me that I should only record these during the daytime, and while I appreciate your uh, want for me to have the best quality lighting, that is just not possible. <laughs> I work during the day, Monday through Friday. so. Uh, and with winter, it's like impossible to get back home before the sun sets. So, yep, it's going to be like this. So let me know if this lighting works or if I, I have another thing I was going to try. But I just wanted to see what you guys thought since I know nothing about lighting. And I think this looks pretty OK. So <laughs> please be honest with me. You won't hurt my feelings. Just let me know what you think. So yeah, now back to the drawing. Um, so with this line art phase, I was struggling a little bit with how I wanted to break up the textures of this because I did also bring in a little bit of the javelina in here because javelina have, um, they're not really spines or pins like you would find on like a porcupine or anything like that, but they do have these longer spiky bits of hair on their backs and like necks. So I really wanted to exaggerate that and push it all over this creature. So it has a lot of different textures and I wanted to really show that off with the line art first and foremost. Because even with the scorpion tail, that's more of like a hard outer skeletal structure texture and uh, it looks kind of more shiny. And then we have like the feathers and the spines and kind of like a, a furry texture to it as well. So I really wanted to push all of those different textures within my line art first and foremost. And then later on, we'll really try more to push that in the coloring phase. And then I remembered this time because I really wanted to show off the depth of this guy's pose. I added some thicker lines for the shapes that are in front of the other shapes of the character because I just felt like it was kind of getting lost, especially with this pose in particular. Um, with all the lines being the same weight, I had trouble seeing what was in front of what. So I just wanted to add a couple more thicker lines to at least have certain parts of it pop and come closer to the, the viewer. So 
So now with the line art out of the way, it's time to test some colors. So I wanted to keep this guy similar to the colors of the Cactus Wren, which are in the browns and reds, but I also thought it was gonna be a little bit difficult to color, um, especially this evening when I did do this drawing. Um, I just, I was not on my game. Like I was feeling really meh about this drawing. I like it more now that I'm looking at it now, but I'll be honest guys, it, it was really tough to push through this one. I just was not feeling it at all that evening. So um, I don't fully dislike the coloring job here at the end, but I know that I was kind of beating myself up for it. And I was dreading at least this part a little bit because I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna color well. It's an off day, but I have to push through it and just get it done. And uh, yeah, it was a little intimidating to get this thing started. But I do like how it turned out. Um, I like the striping and speckling that comes from the Cactus Wren. Like its main body, I would say is mostly white. And then it has these little brown stripes and speckles all over its body. And then its main wings turn to more of the brown with the reddish browns and have um, white stripes and spots. So I tried to replicate that here with the wings. Um, I probably should have done a little bit more studies of the actual Cactus Wren, maybe seeing its wings open so I could see where those whites and reds actually hit on the feathers. Um, I mean, I still think it looks pretty good, but I think I should have done a little bit more studies of the actual bird. And then I also kind of exaggerated some of the colors. Uh, I pushed more reds and browns in places that it wasn't on the Cactus Wren, and I think that turned out really good just to keep the face and neck more of the white and brown like speckling look and then the rest of the body push the browns and the reds even more. And now we're jumping into the scorpion part of it. So here in Arizona, I don't know if this is correct. So anyone else who's Arizonan, please don't jump down my throat. But I don't think we have black scorpions here. I think we have bark scorpions and more of the brown colored scorpions. But I wanted to have some other type of color contrast within this creature and not just have it be all browns and tans. So I thought let's do more of the blackish gray scorpion for the different parts of the body uh, that are based off the scorpion. And I think that added a lot. It was a nice different like color pop and it also really showed off the shine of the texture of the scorpion. So I really, really liked that part for sure. And I think that kind of brought it all together because I feel if it was brown, it would just all kind of be really boring and just all one tone. And having that blackish gray really helped bring this whole thing together for me. So yes, I know it's not an Arizona scorpion because I don't know if we have black scorpions here or like the king scorpions or whatever they're called, but it still worked out pretty well. And then the cactus, that posed a whole nother thing. I was like, oh great, I have never drawn or colored a cactus in my life. And I looked at a couple pictures and I'm like, well, all right, well, we're gonna try and see how I can reflect the uh, the divots that are in a cactus because I really want to have the two different types of greens. And so I tried it and I don't mind it too much. Like, I think it looks cool. It might not be 100% accurate to how a cactus, like actually like how its colors work at all. But you know, I still like it. It's, it's my own <laughs> mythological cactus because <laughs> you know what? I, it just looks cool and I like it. And so I wanted to go in and add a couple more white speckles, really push the white um, speckling that comes from the cactus wren because I didn't feel I had enough. So I went in with my gel pen and just added a little bit more. And then we are basically done. We're wrapping up this guy and I do think he turned out pretty good. Honestly, for me, he's not really one of my favorites, but I don't like fully dislike him. So I just, you know, sometimes they're gonna be great. Sometimes I might be a little bit iffy on these guys. So, you know, I have like a hundred of them to make. So one or two of them might not be my favorite, but I still think he was fun. He was still fun to design and still fun to draw. So, you know what, let's go ahead and jump into your guys' submissions from last week. 
So you guys had so many cosmic dragons. It was ridiculous. So many good ones. Um, first off, AD and a normal, you have been rocking it every week. I need to feature some other people probably coming up, but I had to show off yours because it just looks like a Dark Souls cosmic god. I absolutely love it. Serix, I really love yours. Yours looks like a world destroyer with that really intense mouth and expression. And I love the smoke and lightning ish shapes around the horns and the smoke coming out of the mouth. And you see a planet being destroyed there. And Sixer, I really like yours. I really like the gradient that's on the wings and the stomach. And I like how your dragon is like protecting the planets with its wings. I think that's a really cute idea. And I just love the design overall and really great choice in colors. But either way, everyone rocked it. Like I loved so many submissions. Like really, this was difficult for me to pick. You guys did so amazing. And I loved seeing all the different cosmic dragons and colors. It was just all so gorgeous this week. So thanks again, guys, so much for stopping by and checking out this video. And please, if you want to participate, make sure to post on Instagram or Twitter under KM100Dragons, your Arizona or desert dragon. I really look forward to seeing your guys' creations and please, any skill level. Don't be intimidated. We're all super friendly and make sure to go show some other people some love in the KM100 Dragons hashtag. Give them a comment, give them a heart. Really show your appreciation and show some love to the community. So thanks again guys so much for stopping by and I will see you all next time. Bye everybody.